I want to do a quick video, short, a screen capture video to show you how to use this survey sheet. Um, first, you need to have three partners. Put your name here, your partner's name, other partner's name. Then, you, you know, you need to read all of this carefully unless you listen to this video and pay attention and even then I think you should review it to make sure you got it alright now the point is that you need to get one person to fill out this survey completely <clears throat> down here especially these are the important questions but to get there you ha the, the person has to go through one two a B questions A B and questions one two three preliminary questions alright but as soon as you find one person that can that you can finally get down here to ask the question set number two, you know, make sure you put down male or female and then the age. Ask the person the age. The age group has to be within 18 to 22, right? Um, then you fill this out and you're done. But it might be hard to find that person, so I'll go ahead and let you stop after you have asked at least 10 people, all right? So find at least one person who can ask all the questions or show that you've asked at least 10 who were eventually disqualified. If you find one who can answer the survey, this person must be a U of Akron freshman between the ages of 18 to 22 who is not simultaneously taking high school classes. Now here's the tally of initial participants. Initial because you at least will ask them these questions, okay? I mean, excuse me, question set number one. So you place an X in a box for every student to whom you ask question set number one. In order to even ask the question set number one to someone, you must first determine that the student is a full-time Akron freshman between the ages 18 to 22. <clears throat> the, I don't need that question I'm not there. Okay. These are prerequisite questions. As soon as you find a full-time U of Akron freshman between the ages of 18 to 22 that can answer the question set number one completely, you can quit tallying and you can use the student to finish the survey. Then you are done. Okay. If you do not find even one student that is qualified to answer question set number two, then make sure you have placed an X in each of the following boxes. Which means that you've asked ten students. And so here are the boxes. All right. So find someone that looks like he's a student or she's a student and just stop them quickly. All right. Now, be sure that you do this in your group of threes, and uh, don't split up. You all three have to be together, so we can ensure that no one is making up answers or somehow writing down the wrong answers by mistake. Okay. So, of the group of three, the three of you approach somebody, and one of you asks, "Excuse me, are you a, a freshman?" Says, "No." Okay. Go to another person. Find someone who's a freshman. You find someone who's a freshman. Say, "Are you between 18 and 22?" The answer is no, then you got to go to someone else. Find someone who's a freshman of both 18 and 22, then ask him these questions. All right. And so don't don't mark an X if someone says if you stop someone and say, "Hey, are you a freshman?" and someone says, "No." Don't don't mark an X there. You got to find a freshman first, and this freshman has to be 18 to 22. Then you ask them question set number 1, and if they can't do that, then you can put an X, and then you have to find someone else who at least gets down to question set number 1. Now, what I want you to do is I want you to be sure to read the following to every participant. The survey is required for a class. All participants will remain anonymous to me and to the study. Please answer honestly. Question one, please listen to the whole question before responding. On a scale of one to ten, ten being high, how good of a student were you in high school? By good, I mean getting good grades, being socially balanced, and get generally enjoying a sense of control, understanding, confidence, and well-being. Would you say you were a seven or above? Yes or no? That's how you should ask the question. Read the whole thing and then say yes or no. So if the person says yes, then you go on to question number two. If the person says no, go ahead and place an X in the box and you need to ask nine more that question. You need to get nine more through A and B and into at least question one. Okay, but if the person says yes, then move down to question two. Say please listen to the whole question before responding on a scale of one to ten, ten being high. How good of a student are you now in college? By good, I mean getting good grades, being socially balanced, and generally enjoying a sense of control, understanding, confidence, and well-being. Would you say you are a four or below? 
yes or no. Now, if the person says no, at this point you have to go up and put an X up here, and you have to ask however many blank boxes you have left, that's the number of people you need to ask. But if the person says yes, then go on to question three, okay? Question three, is the yes response to question two due to something else other than an external factor that has affected you, like the loss of a loved one, or an extended illness, or a particularly troubling job situation, yes or no? That's what you need to say. Now, if yes, then bingo, you've hit him or her. You found the one person that we believe is really struggling, may, maybe struggling with LIS. All right, and then you, you need to fill this out. So at that point, ask for the person's age. Well, see, you've already asked for the age up here, right? So make sure that you get it specific, and then ask, you know, Question four, do you sleep at least seven hours per night, five nights a week? Put a yes or no here. Question, question five, how many times do you eat breakfast in the morning per week? Uh, you'll get a number. Put it there. Question six, do you have to make your own breakfast? And if so, do you have a fridge and or stove you can use to do so? So now look, if the person says no, I don't have to make my own breakfast and just stop right there you don't have to worry about the fridge or stove thing right if the person says yes but all I have is a fridge then you circle the second one if she says yes but all I have is a stove circle that one if I say yes if someone says yes and I have both a fridge and a stove circle this one if they say yes I have to make my own breakfast but I don't have either one then you circle it now what if what if uh, someone else is making the breakfast okay um, um, then don't even worry about it. Just put no, I don't have to make my own breakfast. And then here is please describe, question seven is please describe your average breakfast. Now here is just jot down what they tell you and, and, and I'll figure out the, uh, the categories and that sort of thing. Okay, so the confusing part here, you know, this is very complicated, and, and you got to, you know, get someone down to question set one, at least, you got to get 10 people, at least, uh, you got to get 10 people into at least question set number one, and some of them are going to be qualif disqualified right at question one, that's fine, put an X there at that point, and then you just need to ask nine more, um, but we're hoping you can find at least one person of the 10 you have to ask, of the 10 people you find that are both University of Akron freshmen and between the age 18 and 22, we're hoping that you'll find at least one, right, that uh, will slip down over to these ones and allow you to, to ask them the questions down here. So, um, <clears throat> let's see, let's see um, what you do, okay. But please remember that y you're in groups of threes. And each one of you has to ask, has to try to fill out, to try to find at least one person for down the, down here. And, it, and you know, if you can't find that one person, you have to keep on going until you ask 10, question set number one. So, you know, in theory, the three of you might just strike out completely and not find a single person. But that means that the three of you together have asked 30 people. So I think we have a good chance of trying to find one, all right? And um, now also kind of be sensitive uh, to your partners. If you strike lucky, okay, so, you know, you ask someone, and in the first time you ask someone, you actually get the whole thing done, could you hang around? Well, you need to hang around. Uh, you need to hang around so that you, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, so that you can uh, make, make, you know, be, make sure that uh, your partners are getting the right answers. But, but then, can you, uh, excuse me, can you can you try to to help them find one person, to, so they can fill out their sheet? Uh, that would be great. All right. So, why don't why don't you uh, you know just take turns doing this um, and asking people and help each other fill out you know the uh, the sheets.